Today we're gonna to make my Thai butternut squash chickpea curry. It is incredibly flavorful, comes together in just one pot, and is weeknight friendly. This curry is inspired by my travels to Thailand, and today we're gonna to bring some of those incredible Thai flavors to your kitchen in a fun yet accessible plant-based way. I'm Nisha, and this is Rainbow Plant Life, where I teach you how to master vegan cooking at home. We're gonna start by prepping our butternut squash. The first thing I'm gonna do is pop the squash in the microwave for one to two minutes, that's gonna make it a lot easier to slice because it's gonna soften it up a bit. And then we'll take a vegetable peeler and peel off the skin. Next, you'll cut the butternut squash in half horizontally. I find it's a bit easier to cut than vertically. Cut the bottom half in half again and scoop out all of the seeds. And finally, chop the butternut squash into cubes. No need to finely dice it, but you don't want the chunks to be too large. You need about five cups of cubed butternut squash, which is roughly 700 grams. This is all the squash we need for the curry. I've got a little bit extra, so I'm just gonna pop it in this reusable bag and then stick it in the freezer and I'll use it later for another curry or soup. And believe it or not, you can actually put frozen butternut squash in a smoothie. It sounds weird, but it works pretty well. And next up, we're going to dice one large yellow onion and two medium carrots. When I'm cutting an onion, whether it's chopping or dicing, I always leave the root on, also known as the onion butt, not really, I just made that up. Um, but that helps keep the onion together so when you're dicing it doesn't go all over the place. So next time you cut an onion, if you're not keeping the root on, try keeping it on and it will make a difference. For the carrots, no need to peel them. Just give them a wash and a scrub before dicing. In addition to the onions and carrots, we're also gonna use some garlic, ginger, Thai chili peppers, and lemongrass. This recipe calls for four cloves of garlic, but these are kind of the stupid baby cloves, so I'm gonna use five cloves. And then we're gonna use about a two inch piece of ginger. I recently learned something about ginger that kind of blew my mind. You don't actually need to remove the peel. It is edible. As long as you have a good quality grater or microplane like this, just do a little grating and then you won't even notice it as long as you cook it down and it saves a lot of time and effort. Next up, we're gonna use some Thai chili peppers, also known as bird's eye chili peppers. These are optional and if you have what I call baby mouth, do not use them because they are very spicy and there's already gonna be some spice from the curry paste. If you like some heat but not a ton, you could maybe use like half of this or use a serrano pepper, which is less spicy. But if you like it spicy like I do, go ahead and use two of these bad boys or three of them. And the first thing you wanna do is take off the stem. If you want to remove some of the heat, you can take out the seeds before slicing. I'm gonna slice them into thin slivers and leave the seeds in, or you can mince the peppers up. Lemongrass is also technically optional, but if you can find it, it makes a really big difference. It's got this incredible aroma. It's like lemony and citrusy, but minty and floral at the same time. And it's mild and light, but sharp at the same time. It's not commonly sold at most grocery stores, but you can sometimes find it at a place like Whole Foods. And of course, you can always find it at your local Asian grocery store. Lemongrass is commonly used in Thai food, but also lots of other Southeast Asian cuisines like Vietnamese food. To prepare the lemongrass, first cut off the nubby end. And these top socks are flavorful, but they're not tender enough to eat. So cut those off. I'll show you how to use them later. And then we're gonna remove the papery outer layers. They're quite tough until we're left with the inner white core, which is really tender and almost bendy. If you're not sure how many layers to remove, you can bisect the lemongrass in half vertically. And that way you can feel the texture I like to grate lemongrass with this grater, but if you don't have one, you can dice it up with a sharp knife. These top stalks of the lemongrass are too tough to use in this curry, but don't throw them away because they're really aromatic. Just smash down on them with a rolling pin or a chef's knife to release their aroma. And I love using them to make fresh lemongrass tea. Roughly chop up the stalks and simmer or steep them in boiling water, but you can also add them to soups or stews or broth to infuse them. Just discard the stalks before serving. Now let's talk about the red curry paste. You could of course make your own curry curry paste at home. It'll make this dish even more exquisite. But to keep things a weeknight friendly, we are gonna use a store-bought curry paste. And for a while, I was using this Thai Kitchen brand red curry paste. It's still a pretty decent brand I recommend, especially because it's easy to find in most stores. But then a Thai friend of mine recently recommended I try out this brand. It's called Maisery. She says it's a lot more flavorful. Uh, and I got it at my local Southeast Asian grocery store for like $1.29 versus um, this is like $4 at Whole Foods, so definitely gonna save money when you shop at your local ethnic grocery store. And usually you're also gonna be supporting a small family-run business, so that's also a good thing. For curry paste, you do wanna make sure if you're not using one of these two brands to read the labels because some of them have shrimp paste, so they're not vegan. All right, I'm just gonna give these a taste test. It's probably not gonna be very good on its own, but I do wanna compare the spice variability. This is really not very spicy for me. 
Mm. Oh, this one is a little spicy. I feel it in my nose. All right. Oh, one sec. All right, so if you're gonna use Thai Kitchen Brand, this is pretty commonly available. I would use the full five tablespoons in the recipe unless you don't like spicy food at all. The Maisery Brand is a lot more spicy and more flavorful, so I would probably scale back on the amount of the curry paste or on the chili peppers. All right, let's start cooking our curry. We're gonna heat up a Dutch oven or a deep saute pan over medium high heat with some coconut oil. I like to use coconut oil in Thai curries, but you can use a neutral flavored oil if you prefer. Once the oil is hot, we'll add the diced onions and carrots with a pinch of salt. While the onions and carrots are cooking, I wanna talk through a few other ingredients in this curry. We've got our chopped butternut squash, and like any Thai curry, we're gonna use full fat coconut milk. It's gonna make it really luscious and creamy. We need a little extra liquid as well. I had some leftover vegetable broth in my fridge, but you could easily use water. What else? We've got some soy sauce, coconut sugar, and chickpeas to bulk up the meal and make it a full dinner. So chickpeas, not traditionally used in Thai cooking, but this is not an authentic Thai recipe. It's just inspired by the Thai flavors I love so much, the combination of sweet and salty and spicy and sour. All right, let's go check on those carrots and onions now. They need about seven to eight minutes. You wanna stir occasionally until they're tender and lightly browned. Now it's time to amp up the flavor with all those aromatics, ginger, garlic, lemongrass, and chili peppers. We're also gonna add in that red curry paste. We'll stir this mixture very frequently for about two minutes. If it starts to look like it's drying out or getting stuck to the bottom of the pan, Add a splash of water, maybe a couple splashes, that's gonna prevent it from burning and sticking. Then we'll deglaze the pot by pouring in one cup of the vegetable broth. It is important to scrape up the bits stuck to the bottom of the pot because that is where a lot of flavor lives. Then comes our coconut milk. It's gonna make the curry luxurious. Also gonna balance all the spiciness. Give that all a stir, and then we'll add in the cubed butternut squash. We'll also add some soy sauce for those salty umami notes and a tablespoon and a half of coconut sugar. Stir it up to combine. We'll bring the curry to a boil then reduce the heat and let it hang out at a simmer, stirring occasionally for about 20 minutes or until the squash is tender. All right, we need to chat a little bit about soy sauce for a second. Typically in the past, I've made this curry with a standard tamari or soy sauce from the grocery store or a low sodium one. But when I went to my local Southeast Asian market a few weeks ago, I picked up some Thai soy sauce. It's also known as thin soy sauce or light soy sauce. It's kind of the multi-purpose soy sauce used in most Thai cooking, but this is a lot saltier than these guys. It's called light soy sauce, but it's only lighter in texture and in color, not in sodium. So if you're gonna use this, be sure to use a lot less of this. And if you're gonna use a low sodium, you'll need more. And there are more details on that in the blog post. All right, smells so good. The butternut squash is tender. If you're not sure, just go ahead and stab it with a fork. And now we're gonna blend up part of the curry. We wanna keep some of the texture. So we're gonna use an immersion blender, use an immersion blender, and then blend about half of it up. You could also transfer half of it to a stand blender, but I don't wanna wash any more dishes, so. Immersion blender it is. Our curry is partially blended now. I'm gonna add in the chickpeas. This is about two cans of chickpeas rinsed and drained or about a little over three cups of cooked chickpeas from scratch. And once the chickpeas are in the curry, we'll bring it to a gentle simmer and then stir in our greens because greens are good for you. I'm using about four cups, maybe a little more of baby spinach and baby kale. You can use either or and just simmer them for a few minutes until the greens are wilted. Now to finish this curry, we're gonna add in a tablespoon of rice vinegar. You can find this at most grocery stores, but if you can't, you can use lime juice instead or lemon juice probably too. And it's going to cut through the creaminess of the coconut milk and kind of just brighten everything up. And some cilantro, finely chopped. And then finally, an optional ingredient, totally fine if you don't have it, I make this all the time without it, but Thai basil, again, something you can find at an Asian grocery store. And it's a little bit different than regular basil. They're not interchangeable. I'm just gonna take a few leaves and tear them, because when you tear them, you release the essential oils and just add it along with the cilantro. Our favorite way to serve this curry is over white jasmine rice, but you could definitely serve it over brown rice to pack in a little extra nutrition if you like. And right before serving, I like to finish the curry with a little extra Thai basil on top. If you don't have Thai basil, you can use cilantro. Get a little bit of rice, a butter and squash. This is so flavorful and creamy and comforting. It's really balanced in flavors. It's a little spicy from the curry paste and the chili peppers, sweet from the butternut squash and coconut sugar, a little sour from the rice wine vinegar. And if you are looking for more cold weather comfort food, I've got more right here.